In spite of all the available technology, construction is very hard work. Lifting and carrying construction materials constantly and everywhere. Holding heavy machinery. Stooping and bending all the time. Working overhead or kneeling down. Strain from early morning into the night. In the heat and cold, in the rain, and covered with dust. To top it off, there's the noise, the hectic pace, the stress. Making these jobs easier and safer. And above all, avoiding or at least reducing tasks that pose a health risk is the key to occupational safety and health. And it's the whole point of ergonomics in construction. Today, ergonomics plays an increasingly important role in construction. Around the world, researchers at universities, in government, and in the construction industry are looking at how workers perform tasks and studying the effects. The scientists do this to fit the jobs to people through the ergonomic design of the workplace, machinery, and equipment, and through changes in behaviors and work practices. Beginning with the handheld wedge and the invention of axes in the Stone Age, through the evolution of individual tools over the centuries, to the ergonomic, computer-aided design of industrial aids such as an abrasive cutter. Today, the spectrum includes a saw, for instance, with a blade that has teeth of differing sizes. The fine teeth make the first cut easier, while the coarser teeth make it possible to cut through the piece quickly. Another example is this gadget used by a floor tiler. Using this tool, the tiler no longer has to do the job on his knees. With the aid of a vacuum lifter, he can lay tiles one after another while standing comfortably. He can lay the tiles quickly and they fit exactly. And then there are more complex solutions, like the cab in a construction vehicle, which was designed not only to help do the job, but also to meet the needs of the person sitting in it, because the person who works in an ergonomically designed cab is more efficient and more productive. All those who work in construction are exposed day in and day out to many types of stress that have to do with the nature of the job and the type of technology used in performing the job. These stresses are the result of working conditions that apply to a particular job, plus the overall conditions on the construction site. Workers are exposed to many different kinds of stress. Physical stress, for example, straining the muscles and the spinal column lifting and carrying heavy loads, working under cramped conditions. Mental and psychological burdens, particularly in stressful situations. Vibration stress, for instance, brought on by working with a jackhammer, where vibrations and sound waves can damage the hands and hearing. Stress from exposure to various forms of radiation, including the ultraviolet rays that result from welding, but also stress caused by inadequate lighting and radiated heat encountered in road construction. Climate stresses, heat and cold, drafts and moisture in the air are more than just discomforts. They are also sources of stress. Stresses from hazardous substances, for instance, vapors coming from solvents, dangers that are often underestimated. These different types of stress are not usually isolated during a workday. They are mixed together, affecting the worker as a complex of stresses. Because heavy physical labor is typical in construction, we'll concentrate here on physical stress. It's important to know that no stress affects everyone in the same way. 
For instance, a job that's difficult for an apprentice may be easy for an experienced worker, like child's play. And in situations where a tall person can reach a ceiling with no problem at all, a short person will have to really stretch. On the other hand, where a tall person would have to stoop down, a short person can work in relative comfort. We can see clearly that because of an individual's distinct characteristics, when the same stresses are present in varying cases, the effects may be entirely different. And that when evaluating a job, it's not just a question of weighing the stress, but it's the effects of those stresses that's so important. Every stress has a measurable effect on the person doing a job. In construction, physical stress and its effects are quite common. This should not cause any problems, as long as working conditions are okay, or at least reasonably acceptable. It gets to be a problem when employees are so severely stressed, so affected by stress factors, that the job suffers and the worker's health could be endangered. That's why industrial hygienists and other researchers go to the construction site to record work practices and levels of stress. In clinics, doctors specializing in occupational medicine examine workers to detect the effects of wear and tear and to determine if there are health effects from job stresses. In a biomechanics lab, mock-ups of typical working situations are made as realistic as possible and then analyzed. Studies like these and their results are needed to help improve working conditions, redesign tools and equipment, and change work practices and the work culture. Here's a common problem that affects everyone and that everyone is familiar with. It affects the back. If too much stress is placed on it or because of normal wear and tear, the vertebrae can shift until they rub against each other and wear at the edges. The discs loosen and shift, causing painful pressure. The result? Lumbago, or painful sciatica. If a disc's cartilage tears and the core puts pressure on the nerve, that's a slipped disc, and the result can be anything from severe pain to paralysis. To keep disc damage of this kind from happening in the first place, ergonomic studies of the spinal column are being done that relate specifically to construction. In these studies, lifting, as it's done in the building of a masonry wall, for instance, can be studied in detail, and the stresses that result can be calculated. Such calculations form the basis of a program that can offer custom-tailored suggestions to each individual, explaining the proper way to lift heavy loads. All this knowledge and experience yields practical do's and don'ts to prevent painful injury. Single loads that are very heavy should be lifted from a crouching position with the spine as straight as possible. Turning should be done with the whole body and the load should be kept as close to the body as possible so that minimum stress is put on the disc. This advice about crouching doesn't apply to lighter loads such as bricks that are always being lifted because going into a crouching position for this type of lifting would put too much stress on the knees and hip joints. When lifting and carrying, distribute the loads across both arms if possible. And if it gets too heavy, don't be tough and risk an injury. Get someone to lend a hand. Teamwork can make tough jobs easier by keeping distances as short as possible and keeping bundles smaller and lighter. Of course, there are now industrial aids to make things easier. Today, there's a huge variety of machines and devices on the market, some in Europe and some in the United States. We'll demonstrate a few of them here, as they are used on the job every day. With this stair climber, for instance, loads that are as heavy and bulky as a disassembled boiler can be lifted by one person, one step at a time. 
and transported farther without a problem. The worker doesn't have to lift or carry any heavy loads, doesn't tire as quickly, and stays healthier longer. This working scaffold, which is moved and put into position with the help of a motor, improves the mason's working conditions. In the workplace, the scaffold has proved how practical it is. The mason can work in a position that makes good ergonomic sense and can, for instance, shift large blocks without getting worn out all at once. Even in public works, there are now machines that make it possible to move whole layers of sidewalk sections from their stacks to where they're going to be laid, where they can then be positioned with precision to within a fraction of an inch. By making good use of mechanization, the job can be made easier and efficiency can be increased. Constantly working overhead or in a kneeling position is exhausting and can even lead to illness because the spine, the joints, and even the muscles are put under great stress. The muscles, among other things, are the producers of strength that stabilize our skeletons and make physical labor possible. They're made up of many muscle fibers that contract after they receive an impulse message from a nerve. For the muscles to be able to work, the blood must deliver oxygen, the source of energy, and carry off waste products. In the case of work done while moving around, the muscles contract, then relax again. In this way, they're supplied with plenty of blood. In the case of work done in one position, muscles are always contracted, and the blood flow decreases, and the supply of fresh oxygen and the removal of waste products isn't what it should be. The result? Rapid fatigue and reduced efficiency. For this reason, ergonomics has been looking at jobs that involve holding objects and staying in cramped positions for long periods of time. For instance, ergonomics looks at the muscular stress resulting from holding a power drill above shoulder level. These studies led to the building of this drill rest which makes drilling into ceilings much easier, making it possible to drill one hole after another without tiring. Then too, there is the realization that short breaks yield big benefits. They interrupt the stress and prevent fatigue from setting in too quickly. Here are some other behavioral guidelines to combat long-term stress in cramped positions. If you're painting, for instance, don't paint overhead for too long a time. Don't paint a ceiling all at once. Alternate with another painter. Changing activities shifts the focus of the stress and enables you to be more efficient without harming your health. Another example, when laying tiles or other types of flooring while on your knees, it's a good idea to stand up once in a while and stretch to get out of that cramped position and take the strain off the spine. Of course, the knees should be protected by suitable padding. And last but not least, it should be possible to cut the tiles while you're standing up without having to bend over. That will relieve the stress from time to time and make the job easier. Iron workers have to bend again and again to tie in the steel for reinforced concrete. This constant stress can be avoided by an iron tying device. When fitted with steel clamps, the unit weighs just about four and a half pounds, and it's easy to work with. Without having to bend down at all, the iron worker ties in the iron of the upper part of this ceiling quickly and securely. With this laying machine, sheets of insulation are attached to flat roofs. The worker works in an upright position, which is ergonomically better than the alternative. 
This approach relieves stress from the worker's back, shoulders, and arms, and helps improve efficiency. Even in masonry jobs, there are many possibilities for sparing the back from constant bending and stooping. Often, all that is needed is a simple device, like this frame. It's easy to turn around, and in this way, the bucket of mortar is held higher. The mason can keep working in what is a more comfortable position. Then there are mason scaffolds that can always be adjusted to the proper position. They're equipped with two platforms of differing heights. The masons stand on the lower one, and the mortar buckets and the bricks are placed on the higher one so that they can be reached easily, and so that the back is not subjected to excessive stress. And finally, for facades, mobile rising scaffolds are available, which may be raised to about 325 feet. These scaffolds can transport the masons with their materials and equipment. The platform is brought into the proper position, right down to the last couple of inches, and it has two levels, so that no one has to do any bending. The upright position makes work easier and increases efficiency. We have seen a few examples of techniques that can be used and of industrial aids that have proved their value from an ergonomic standpoint. Development is ongoing and will bring new solutions to familiar problems. If we are to solve these problems, the employer must provide available tools and fulfill a responsibility to protect the health of the employee. And all workers must use ergonomically designed tools that are provided and use the tools correctly. By designing the workplace to meet the needs of the people working there, working conditions will be improved. Workers will remain healthy. Work at the construction site will be made more efficient. And above all, the work will be more attractive. That is and continues to be the essence and purpose of ergonomics in construction. <laughs>